because this is a queer event, I figured I should read, a, do some queer stuff. Um, this is for, this poem was written for uh, those who have body image issues and the people that love them. I watch her. Looking in the mirror as we undress for the first time, standing naked, she raises and wrinkles nose at reflection. It is quick, an instant of scrutiny. My heart aches in the moment, realizing she knows not her terroir, the lusciousness of her landscape. She observes rejection, watching stretch marks spread, etching vineyards in her skin, fingernails raking across dried leaves of freckled flesh, face contorting while grasping the ripeness of labored chest, her mind scorning her body, never noticing when the makeup and clothes come off, we all bear bruises and scars. She is viewing only flaws holding womanly image to high school standards, forcing white finger down pink throat, pushing regrets against stomach walls, hurling insecurities of what attractive means, she corrupts commode, coating it with false promises of physical perfection. She envisions her eating disorder, gawking, I state you're gorgeous. Before words could twist a protest, my mouth stops her mid-sentence, compassionately kissing, wishing she could picture looks irreplaceable, distinguishing stretch marks as roadmaps for her children, 20-hour labor of love stories teaching them to accept their own changing anatomy, fingernails tracing constellations across luminous skin, face beaming while cherishing the fruits of suckle bosom, arms strong enough to hold the moon, her offspring, and me, my tongue praying she could taste and see flawless, the contours of her figure, complex as California Cabernet, long legs yielding to babies planted around my waist, placing pale fingers between coral lips, swirling bliss beyond ecstasy, appreciating her beauty. So this is where I'm gonna go, uh, yeah, I'll go dark and then bring it back. Since this is storytelling, um, there's this story is just deep. This is all I can say. He left no time for regret, kept his dick wet with his same old safe bed. And me and my head high and my tears dry go on without my God. His rage swam with ghosts. So familiar felt death's hand, sudden violence. Monday morning bruised blue, 10. Our once quiet street, now littered with the sound of choking chainsaws, coughing out my blood and bones, nine. Wide eyes stare back at headless body on gray pavement, like rose petals. My confetti flesh sprinkles tattered green garments. Eight. Neighbors hear only one thing. My cries for help unheard whispers. You, stop and call our second eldest daughter to tell her I will be roadkill, seven. My soul is in your left hand, wrath in your right. Six. 
from mid street to front door. Brown hair, green dress, Shadowwood Lane, an unwilling accomplice. You went back to what you knew, so far removed from all that we went through. When I had to let a trouble trap, my odds are stacked. I go back to five. The force in your slap knocks me down. The tone in your voice sings sorrows to my gut with your boot. Four. Fingers clenched around throat, you say you're going to kill me. Today, I believe you. Three. Your tongue tastes green. I smell death on your breath and fear for our children. Two, my love. Sweet as agave, you enter the kitchen. I flinch. That is not your smile. Two, one. I awake from a dream, unaware of the nightmare I am entering. April 26, 2010, Louisville, Texas. A husband murders his wife with chainsaws in the middle of the street, 11 a.m. Some testimonies, uncomfortable truths, listen. Who dares to say this? That suspect is still at large. You only say goodbye with words I died a hundred times. You go back to her and I Go back to You only said goodbye with words I died a hundred times You go back to her And I go back to Black 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 I promise I will bring you out of the dark. Flashback. Years before I was born, dad had a habit that led mom to have it. She escaped death in the process. The first time she felt an air bubble burst, it didn't stop the thirst. It was the one in her shoulder that won her over while daddy stayed heroin soldier. Death. Pissed he'd miss moms, decided to snuff out pops, so we went to fate so they could debate on what to do. Opening credits to My Birth, the movie. A poem starring moms, pops, death, fate, destiny, and introducing me. Flash forward, late 1972, death gets his bright idea. The next time this brother tells a lie, we gonna have his hide. This just so happens to be at the same time, on the eve of my conception, post ejaculation, father declares to mother, you gonna have this baby. These five words caused a cosmic stir that would place me in the middle of simply put, some bullshit. When the sperm poked through the egg, daddy's words became truth. Death was enraged. This sets the stage for what will become the battle for my life. Foreshadow. It took death seven months to create the perfect setup. Mom's car jumped a curb, crashed into a fence, sent my body and umbilical cords in different directions. On the afternoon of September 21st, doctors feared the worst. The nurse screams, we're losing the baby! Cord of life around my neck, strangling me before my first breath. As my soul begins to lift, slow fade to black. Caught a glimpse of fate and told her, hey, yo, say my destiny. She said, 
talk to death, not to me. Below I see the doctors prepping my mom for cesarean section. That's when they performed it in the vertical direction. Blackout. Death slips in. Lights dim. Sins of the father passed on to the child, little one. Your daddy's a liar and I will not allow you to be his truth. Truth be told, I'm surprised you made it this far. Far as I know, your daddy left you and your mama three months ago, so no need to try and live. Give up now and I'll see that your mom makes it through. Zoom out. Through all death's jaw jacking, I was watching what was happening. With every contraction, the cord was getting tighter. Moms was getting tired and the doctors couldn't find a vein. Mom screams in pain, just save my baby! That's when I snapped. 360 degree camera rotation. I told Faye, yo, you tripping. Death is playing you. He knows the five words my daddy spoke are absolute truth. He may not be standing at my mother's side, but he didn't tell her a lie about me. Besides, I'm not just destined to be his word, I'm destined to keep his word. Reverse angle. Fate replies, you have no idea what you in for this life of yours. I think death is trying to do you a favor. No need for favors, fate. No matter what happens in my life, I am destined to be great. Great! Death huffs as the doctors begin to cut my mother's flesh. Split screen. That's when destiny steps in. She slaps the shit out of fate. They pull me from my mother's womb. She grabs death by his own reaper. They unwrap the cord from my neck. Destiny gives me a wink. Zoom in. My blue face turns pink. And I begin to breathe. End credits. <laughs> got one more? Okay, I'm going to do one more. I think this is like one of my favorite, favorite, favoriteest poems I think I've ever written so far um, because it's actually a story. It's actually a nice little children's story that gets urbanized and adulterized in an adult way, not adulterized in that way. But <laughs> It is titled, Henny Penny Take Seven. Henny Penny was cold, chilling, smoking a fatty, went out of the sky, something fell and cracked her on her head. Ah, shit, she said. The sky just fell and busted me on my dome. I gotta go tell the madam what's going on. So she started on her way to tell the madam the haps. As she hit the stroll, she saw good old Goosey Lucy. Fly, bird, with knockout curves, check Henny Penny. Bitch, get your high ass off my block, look like your man didn't fuck you up. Nah, ho, I was smoking a fatty. <laughs> you know, like this, when the sky fell and busted me on my dome, so I'm going to go tell the madam what's going on. Goosey Lucy shook her head. Her thought was, this bitch is tripping. She <laughs> hit the joint and said, I'm going to go with you to see what the madam going to do. So Henny and Penny and Goosey Lucy continued on their way to tell the madam the haps. Turkey Lurky, the local drunk, was staying at the corner store when Henny Penny and Goosey Lucy stopped by for some sunflower seeds, papers, and beer. Where you up to going? It's such a fuck. Turkey lurky hiccup. Henny Penny replied, well, I was smoking a fatty. You know, like this when the sky fell and bust me on my dome, so I'm going to tell the madam what's going on. Turkey lurky laughed. You sick? You going to tell madam that? His thought was, ooh, wait, this bitch going to get clapped. He hit the joint and said, I'm going to go you see what the madam go. So Henny Penny, Goosey Lucy, and Turkey Lurky continued on their way to tell the madam the haps. Now, the madam lived in the east, so they headed to the bus stop when out popped Cocky Locky, the local pimp, whose feathers got ruffled when he saw Goosey Lucy. Ho. Where you going? Strolls in the other direction. Henny Penny steps in. I was smoking a fatty. You know, like this, when the sky fell, bust me on my dome, so I tell no matter what's going on, these two decided to tack along. Cocky Locky thought, Madam gon' dot your other eye talking about the sky fell. He hit the joint and said, Oh, well, you best be certain since my hoe ain't working, I'm coming too. So Henny Penny, Goosey Lucy, Turkey Lurky, and Cocky Locky continued on their way to tell the madam the haps. After arriving at their stop, they hit the block only to spot Lucky Ducky, the neighborhood quacker, ran drugs for the cat pack. Cool bird, she didn't cut no slack. Hey, we all high birds headed. Henny Penny rolled a joint. I was smoking a fatty, you know, like this when the sky fell, bust me on my dome, so I'm going to tell the madam what's going on. These three decided to tag along. Lucky Ducky thought, ooh, -hoo -hoo, this gonna be a quack. She hit the joint and said, y'all gonna need somebody to have y'all back. So Henny Penny, Goosey Goosey, Turkey Lurky, Cocky Locky, and Lucky Ducky continued on their way to tell the madam the haps. Two blocks away from their destination, Lucky Ducky quacks up. <laughs> y'all ever heard of Foxy Loxy? They had heard Foxy Loxy was a bad dude, but no one knew what he looked like because everyone that met him became his food. Actually... Foxy Loxy was a cross-dressing drag queen who liked to do his thing, occasionally help the madam when he just so happened to see Henny Penny, Goosey Lucy, Turkey Lurky, Cocky Locky, and Lucky Ducky, his eyes got so big, he flipped from wig and dressed to baggy b-boy style, met them on the next block talking about word. It's poultry in motion with all the commotion, you <clears throat> fly birds. Henny Penny rolled a joint. 
I was smoking a fatty, you know, like this when the sky fell, bust me on my dome, so I'm gonna tell no matter what's going on, these four decided to tag along. Foxy Loxy thought, oh yes, bitch, a five course meal. <laughs> he hit the joint and said, oh, what's up, this that? This that good Cali greens, huh? That's that green crack. Mm, this too good to be true. I wanna know what the madam gonna do. So Henny Penny, Goosey Lucy, Turkey Lurky, Cocky Lucky, Lucky Ducky, and Foxy Loxy continued on their way to tell the madam the haps. Henny Penny started laughing. <laughs> From the giggles, you see, she put the joint out and said, God damn, that's some good ass weed. Seven Kelly, thank you very much. 